Welcome to this memorial service for Dorothy Kerbs. Those of us who will be worshiping together today are from many different congregations and faith communities, and we live in many different parts of the country, but we are drawn together now by God's Holy Spirit to give thanks for Dorothy and for the love and the grace of God, which holds her still and all of us as one great communion of saints. I'm standing next to this baptismal font at St. Mark's Lutheran Church by the Narrows in Tacoma, because in our Lutheran tradition, we always like to begin worship services like this with thanksgiving for the gift of holy baptism, which gives us our identity as children of God and also welcomes us into life in Jesus Christ. In Dorothy's case, her baptism came very quickly after her birth because of concerns for her life. And then it continued to be a source of blessing for her in all of the years that followed. Even on the threshold of death and new life in God's perfect reign, that promise held Dorothy, as St. Paul recalls for us as children of God in his letter to early Christians in Rome, when we are baptized into Jesus Christ, we are baptized into his death. Paul says, we are buried therefore with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead to the glory of the Father, we too will walk in newness of life. For if we have died with him in a death like his, Paul writes, we know that we will be raised up with him in a resurrection like his. Along with that promise, these baptismal waters also remind us of our home with God and of that voice that calls to us like that of a loving parent with softness and tenderness. No wonder Dorothy loved the song that we will sing now as we gather together in praise. is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Should we linger and heed not his 
mercies, mercies for you and for me. the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Dorothy, and we give you thanks for giving her to us as a companion in our pilgrimage here on earth. In your boundless compassion, console all those who mourn, and grant us faith to see death swallowed up in the victory of Jesus Christ. As we continue our journey here now, we pray that you would also give us faith and hope to trust in you and to be faithful in our walk until that day when we are all joined together in your perfect realm of love and grace and peace. We pray this through Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from Psalm 121. I lift my eyes up to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Hi, world. My mom was the world to me. She loved to spend time and talk. We like to go on walks and visit together at least once a week. She loved to sit in the sunshine, and it played with her golden hair. She actually loved Redfish Lake and to lay on the beach and soak in the sun. She loved to sew clothes and quilts and fix hair. And we did this together until I was about eight or nine when we did our makeup together. We were the girls in our family. She loved music and played her favorite, Snail Diamond, The River Wild, Michael Bolton, Bon Jovi, the Carpenters, Olivia Newton-John, Amy Grant, Christian Music, and many others. She was eclectic in taste and let me pursue my love and music. She played her parents' upright piano until she gave it to Darren. And he loves it totally. Her cousin Steve gave her other piano and she played for years after that. She also played guitar. She loved to cook and host parties and have my friends over. They totally loved her. 
She taught me to be fiscally responsible. She really cared and was sensitive to her feelings and needs for others. She was also gentle, talkative, peaceful, and happy, and she took care of herself and smiled with others. Please smile with me, world. Thank you, God, for mom. I'm so glad she's with you, Lord. Your daughter, Melanie. Greetings from Wisconsin. So we are here today to share some thoughts and memories of our mother, Dorothy. Uh, the boys uh, did write mom letters uh, that were read to her a month ago, and I'm going to be reading excerpts from those letters. Uh, Trenton's at school, so uh, this one is uh, from Austin, and I'm not reading the entire letter, just maybe some of the memories and whatnot. Austin uh, says, you taught me many things. I love baking as much as I do because of your great skills and your patience in teaching me. I learned to swim with some persuasion, but I don't know what I would do without those swimming lessons now because I love swimming and spending time in the water. Somehow you knew just how much it could mean to someone, how much you mean to someone. I wish I would have shown more love and appreciation back to you and Papa for everything you two did for me, but I was too young and immature to truly understand and appreciate it all. I can remember giving you hugs and feeling your embrace and not hugging back the way I should. Oh, what I would do to hug you one last time and enjoy every moment of it. I did enjoy our family trips and holidays very much. You knew how to plan great trips. I had so much fun in Colorado. The rafting, the family games, the time out together in the town, and the whole trip was amazing. The holidays in Idaho were more special than I realized. It gave me the chance to have a Christmas with my big family I rarely get to see. I would do anything to have another one just like it. I love you so much, Nana. I can't wait to see you soon. So much love, your grandson, Austin Dean Kerbs. And this one is from mom and dad's other grandson, Trenton. Again, I'm just reading excerpts from his letter to her. I have memories of reading Bible stories, singing songs, and playing the piano. I can still hear you singing, You Are My Sunshine, and it makes me happy, even though the skies are gray. You always had a smile on your face, and you were always happy. It was always a fun time at Grandma's house. One of the things I remember most was your cooking. Man, was it good. When we were younger, I remember building the swing set in the backyard with Papa, and then Austin and I played in the big box rather than on the new swings. I think there is a picture of that somewhere. I also remember playing ping pong in the basement. It was always a nice time when you would come visit us in Wisconsin. Austin and I would have to share a room so that you guys would have a place to sleep. I liked waking up to eggs and pancakes made with love and a smile, and I know you love doing it. I also really liked baking with you. Your cookies were always the best. There are two things I will always remember about you, your smile and your faith. Looking back, those two things have made a, a big impact on me. You smiled in every situation and didn't let anything take it off your face. I think the reason that you always smiled was your faith. You knew that no matter what God was with you and it, was, it would work, all work out in the end. You even took these two things with you in the last three years. Even though it wasn't the same, I remember seeing your smile the last time I was able to be with you. I wish you could be here for the rest of my milestones in life, but you gave me something so much better. You gave me an example to follow in my walk of life. You mapped out a course according to God's word, and I intend to follow a similar path. Thank you for all you have taught me and given me. I will cherish our memories together for as long as I am able to remember. I will be okay. Well, after hearing the boys' memories and thinking about my own, um, they're all very similar. Um, it was very special to me that they were able to experience love from you as their grandmother. Both my parents had passed away um, when the boys were young, so it was special for them to have both you and Leonard um, in their lives um, and feel loved by you. You welcomed us into your house when we were transitioning to Idaho and you paid careful attention to all the food allergies that Trent had 
and fixed him food and prepared food that was safe for him to eat. When we would visit uh, during that time when they were little, you always had some special little activity planned uh, for them to do, whether it was writing letters or sewing. Um, I know the kids remember those times and always look forward to going over to your house. The other thing that I remember is, is that you always took the time to talk to the boys about Jesus or sing songs to them about Jesus. Um, you demonstrated great strength and faith through your life and you instilled that faith into Brian. And now Brian is also raising his children in the faith. Thank you for passing the gift of faith to my sons and your entire family. That faith will bind us together now and always, and you will be kept alive in our memories forevermore. Well, and finally, uh, for myself, now that I'm over 50, I could write a book of memories of me growing up with my mom, uh, but because time is limited for this virtual service, I will be brief. Um, I'll also share what an impact that she had on me now that I'm older and able to reflect on her impact on me as a, a husband, a father, and a brother. Also, I really can't nail down experiences and memories and the like uh, without also including my dad and my siblings. Uh, some of my fondest memories are family trips that we took to Washington, Oregon, California, Arizona, well, basically every state west of the Mississippi. Uh, long days in the car bickering with Darren and Melanie, but uh, lots of sightseeing and, and family time that I'll always treasure. Gail and I now make it a point to take Trent and Austin someplace different in the country so that we can make similar memories with them. Uh, we also spent many a day visiting and celebrating uh, special occasions with extended family. I miss those times and, and people greatly. I remember how busy our family calendar was growing up. Our mother was amazing at coordinating that along with maintaining the household and everything that that includes. She was always cooking, cleaning, running errands, etc. She sacrificed so much to make sure that the three of us were taken care of, not to mention everybody else outside of our household that she did things for. It must have been overwhelming for her physically with her fibromyalgia. I didn't realize what she meant to me until after I moved out of the house, started a family of my own and reflect on her now that she's finally home with God in heaven. I love you, Mom, and miss you daily. Give Jesus a big hug for us. Sing and dance. Hi, I'm Darren. I'm the middle son, and I've always been a mama's boy. And as I reflected the past couple of years, I realized that the path I've taken, both personally and professionally, was modeled by my mom, whose life was filled with generosity and providing ways for people to use their gifts for good. And now that it's goodbye, there are so many things to say, but I thought I'd share with you just a few of the things I'll take with me. First, I will always be grateful to her for starting me in piano lessons at four years old and sitting alongside me to make sure I practiced, as music has been such a force in both of our lives and in our family. And there are so many traits that I've learned from her and I will cherish, like hard work pays off, and plan ahead and make lists. There's never enough lists. To always save room for pie. To celebrate the good moments and learn from those that aren't. To express your love and to try to be vulnerable and open with your feelings. To always make time for others. To never sweat the small stuff and that grudges do no good. To make sure that your bed sheets have hospital corners to know the difference between log cabin and wedding ring, and that penmanship counts as do actual paper notes in the mail. I'll miss her smile, the feel of her soft hands and their squeezes, weekly hour long phone calls, her cursive penmanship, an attitude check when I'm leaning towards being too proud, and encouragement when life seems overwhelming. I'll never forget the last thing my mom said out loud to me as she was being wheeled away into surgery. I hadn't seen one second in fear in the days leading up to this moment. And as our hands separated, I said, Mom, you've got this. And she turned her head and looked back at me and smiled. No, dear Darren, she said, God's got this. And that coming from my mom has been what's helped me through this last three years and will continue in my life. 
Mom, I will always love you to the moon and back, and your life will always be a blessing to me. Hi, I'm Gloria, Dorothy's older sister. Dorothy was not only my sister, but she was also in later years, my very best friend. We were so close and I miss her so much. But at the same time, I'm, I'm happy for her and rejoicing with her that she is absent from her paralyzed body and present with the Lord in her heavenly home, free from that paralysis and free from her fibromyalgia. And I just praise God for that. It was just the two of us girls in our family. And we shared many wonderful memories over the 74 years together. So it's been hard to, you know, single out something that I wanted to share in just a few minutes, but I decided that it had to be her love of family and, you know, how she worked um, to keep us all connected. Even though my sister struggled with fibromyalgia, myalgia through the years she loved bringing family together whether it be at her dinner table or if it was a a larger um, gathering in their backyard of friends or family my sister and i were really close but we never lived close together um, my family lived in california and sis and her family um, pretty much lived in our hometown. I was fortunate because my husband also uh, grew up in that area. And so our family, at least once, maybe twice uh, a year, a couple times, three times a year, would travel through the Nevada desert. What we, you know, to our home, <laughs> back to our home in uh, Idaho. We always said back home to Idaho. And uh, we made that yearly trip to see our friends and relatives up there. I would say that for the last 25 years, Dorothy and Leonard's basement was our home away from home. And we were always greeted with those open arms of of hospitality, made to feel welcome and so at home. I have so many wonderful memories of all those weeks home in Idaho and at their home. You know, and it was just the little things, smelling that morning coffee and coming upstairs to breakfast and sitting around the island and visiting and sharing plans for the day. and taking those morning walks with my sister. In the evenings, if we were around, we would gather around her dinner table. My sister was such a good cook. And she also often invited, you know, other relatives to join in. Maybe we would play some games after, after dinner. One of the highlights for me is when she would invite our extended family our, all our cousins and their families to gather in the backyard. And she would oftentimes make the main dish and they would come with their, their side dishes and desserts and we'd just gather for this wonderful time of, of fellowship and visiting and laughing and just, it was just a wonderful time. I treasured those times so much. When my husband passed away, I would come up there for maybe three weeks at a time. And later on, you know, my son would join me for several trips up there. We were always welcome, always made to be, feel a part of the family. I am so thankful for all those years and for having that home away from home. So thank you, sis, and thank you, Leonard for the, all those wonderful memories.
I will always treasure them in my heart. Thank you. The first scripture reading is from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fail. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. In our sanctuary at St. Mark's, we have stained glass windows that always seem to connect this indoor space with the larger world around us and also with the rich themes of faith that we remember during worship in Bible passages and songs and prayers. And as I go back to that first Psalm 121 that we heard in this memorial service, my attention is drawn especially to these windows behind me, which are in the northeast corner of our sanctuary, which feature hills and mountains. Behind them in that direction are real mountains like Rainier and the Cascade Range. But the beauty of these windows themselves draws me deeper into that first line of Psalm 121, where the writer says, I lift my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come from? Some hearers of this psalm suggest that the writer is actually contrasting Jewish faith with that of other people who worshiped mountain gods like Baal or El. If that's true, then this affirmation of faith in that first line of the psalm is grounded in the conviction that God is not just out there in some high unattainable place, but that God is actually right here with us. When we need help then, we don't need to look beyond the promise of God's intimate presence right here, right now, in every step of our journey, in every going out and coming in from this time forth and forevermore. That affirmation certainly fits what Dorothy believed and expressed so clearly in her life of faith. It is the trust that was deep in her heart when she wrote a prayer just a day and a half before major surgery, saying, God, please help me be at peace and still in your everlasting love. Help me be strong, she wrote. Let me rest in your protection. It was a prayer grounded in the conviction that God was right there with her and that God would never leave her side. Her help, she knew, was in the Lord who kept her and watched over her by day and by night. Having said that about the psalm, I think Dorothy would also really appreciate another beautiful way of hearing Psalm 121, which is also filled with hope. As many others have suggested, this psalm may be the exaltation of a pilgrim en route to Jerusalem, who has just had his or her first glimpse of that city and the hills on which it was built. In that light, then, the psalm is a celebration of all of those places where we see God's holy presence in our pilgrimage on earth. That way of hearing the psalm also inspires me. And it got me thinking this week about the places where Dorothy saw and experienced God's presence in her life journey. So if you're ready, I want to take us on a, a small pilgrimage of sorts to some places right here around me that will help us remember that together. So to begin with, I'm going to take just a few steps behind me over to the piano bench where Darren, of course, spends much of his time when he is in this sanctuary. In so many ways, this piano is a symbol of the great importance that music had for Dorothy in every stage of her life and how she saw and experienced God 
is present so richly in music. In her journal, she wrote, Music, what a joy I have had over the years because of it. I can't imagine life without it, Dorothy wrote, especially Christian music. It has been one of the best sources of comfort through all of this trial. I liked too what Len wrote about the importance of music in Dorothy's life. Since it was her passion, he wrote, our children grew up with music in their lives and there was always music playing in the background while she worked on projects. I know all of us are very glad that Dorothy insisted that her children take music lessons and develop that skill because of the way that now we have been blessed through their lives, even in this worship service today. As we continue our pilgrimage now, I want to take you downstairs to our children's learning center here at St. Mark's, where we can recall another part of Dorothy's life where God was especially present. Books like these in our Children's Learning Center call to mind not only Dorothy's love of reading, but of her passion early on for children's literature. From her degree in this from the University of Idaho to her care for libraries throughout her life, Dorothy was able to pass on her passion for reading and learning and discovering to children of all ages. And I wonder if some of her particular interest in children's literature came from her own ability to preserve within herself some very important childlike qualities, such as the freedom to be yourself without fear of criticism and the gift of humility, which doesn't presume that you know everything or that you have arrived at some plateau that is higher than others. And as I look at these books, I'm especially mindful of the fact that Dorothy would have loved this one right here called The Keeping Quilt. And we'll say more about that in a little bit. But if we want to appreciate the full range of Dorothy's passion for literature, we can't overlook her deep love and respect for the Bible. And to recall that with you, we're going to go back upstairs to a treasured work of art here at St. Mark's that's in our adult faith formation classroom. Several years ago, we acquired this print that features the beginning of John's Gospel, beautifully adorned by the monks at St. John's Abbey in Minnesota as part of what's known as the St. John's Bible. Along with the exquisite art here and calligraphy, it preserves some of the most beautiful words ever written about God. In the beginning was the Word, John says, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. It's a gospel message about Jesus that is also proclaimed in the name of the church that nurtured Dorothy throughout so much of her life. In Jesus, we meet Emmanuel, God with us, and we welcome the light that shines in the darkness of every time and place. And in the completeness of John's message here, we also meet an apostle of Jesus who embodies that same kind of humility that I saw in Dorothy. He himself was not the light, the gospel writer says, but he came to testify to the light. In Dorothy's case, that testimony was sometimes delivered in words as she shared such gracious words with others often, but most often that testimony to God in Jesus Christ was given in the work of her hands. And to remember that now, I'm going to take just a few steps in front of me into our parish commons, where quilters have worked on so many quilts that are created here and then shared with people around the world. I know Dorothy enjoyed the opportunity to meet some of our quilters 
here at St. Mark's when she visited because they all shared the same passion, the same passion that the Hearts and Hands group in Idaho has as well that Dorothy was a part of, that she appreciated so greatly. And when she wrote about this passion in her journal, Dorothy described quilting as the chance to use my abilities to help others and to get out of myself. She went on to describe in that journal the joy of creating quilts and clothes and wall hangings, saying, much of my life has been blessed with this. And if you knew Dorothy, you knew that this was also a blessing that she wanted to share with others, especially those who had the greatest need. Throughout her life, she wanted to make sure that other people were taken care of. And sewing quilts was a very good way to do that. In the end, that unselfish desire to make sure that others were cared for and the conviction that all gifts from God are meant to be used for good in the world, those were her greatest testimony of all, I think, because they point us to the very heart of that gospel story about the God made known to us in Jesus Christ. The word became flesh. In some expressions of Christianity, that unselfish servanthood that's described in the gospels can be turned into good works that are necessary to, in order to enter the reign of God when we die. But Dorothy was Lutheran through and through and she knew deep down in her bones that it all begins and ends with grace. And with that in mind, we are going to return now to that worship space where we began and to words from scripture, which kept Dorothy's heart so close to God. It is St. Paul who confessed this truth for us, that in the end we are saved not by our good works, but by grace alone, through faith. It's the same truth that led Dorothy to put God's love for me as the very first thing on her list of things for which I am thankful. And when she wrote that beautiful prayer just a day and a half before her surgery, she concluded it by saying, God, keep me always in your grace. I am your child. The next three years after surgery were God's answer again to that prayer for Dorothy. And for you, Len, and for you, Darren, and Melanie, and Brian, and for you, Gloria, her lifelong soulmate and companion, and for you, her grandchildren, and family, and caregivers, and prayer partners, and friends. Through it all, you came to know the depths of God's grace, which surpasses all that we can ask for or even imagine. Even in weakness and despair, with Dorothy, you heard that divine voice, which says, my grace is sufficient. God's answer to Dorothy's prayer came too on the day she died, which truly was a day full of grace. And it comes still, that grace, to you and to me as we continue our pilgrimage here on earth. Keep me always in your grace, Dorothy wrote in her prayer, reminding all of us to trust that promise, the promise that called forth this prayer. Always, all day, all night, in all our coming in and all our going out. Always in your grace. Always. Amen. I was there to hear your morning cry. I'll be there when you I rejoice the day you were baptized. 
Christ to see your life unfold. I was there when you were but a child with a faith to suit you well. In a blaze of light you wandered off to find where demons dwell. When you heard the wonder of the word, I was there to cheer you on. You were raised to praise the living Lord, to whom you now belong. If you find someone to share your time, and you join your heart, as one I'll be there to make your verses rhyme from dust till rising sun in the middle ages of your life not to hold no longer young I'll be there to guide you through the Complete what I become when the evening gently closes in and you shut your weary eyes. I'll be there as I have always been with just one more surprise. I was there to hear your. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. To see your life In our worship life here at St. Mark's, we have been using affirmations of faith on many Sundays that come from the Iona Abbey worship book. And there's one in particular that I think Dorothy would appreciate with her love and appreciation for children's literature. This creed that we are about to say together was actually written by two children, two 14-year-olds who were at Iona for a weekend retreat and it's become part of the worship life of that community and many others around the world. So I invite you now to affirm our faith together with these words. We believe in God who made the sea and the earth, the sun and the sky, who calls us to live responsibly. We believe in Jesus Christ who became human, who healed the sick, who talked to children, who made friends with sinners, he burned brightly and offended many. His journey was one of life and death and resurrection. His light continues to shine in the darkness. We believe in the Holy Spirit who inspired the scriptures and whose breath we breathe. We believe that God calls us to be a community committed to one another, offering a welcome to everyone, old and young, rich and poor, strong and weak. We believe that God calls us to be peacemakers, workers for justice, brothers and sisters, a light for our world. Amen. I'm grateful that Pastor Ann Palma from Our Savior Lutheran Church can also be a part of this memorial service today as she leads us now in the prayers of intercession and thankful for all of you at our saviors and other church communities that are worshiping with us now. We join our hearts together in prayer. In the peace of God, let us pray. Responding to each petition, God of mercy, with the words, hear our prayer. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together 
into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, hear our prayer. You have made us in your image to reflect your truth and light. We give you thanks for Dorothy, for the grace and mercy she received from you, for all that was good in her life, and for the memories that we treasure today. Grant that Dorothy and all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Your mighty power brings out joy from grief and life out of death. Look in mercy on all who mourn. Give us patient faith in times of sorrow. Strengthen us with the knowledge of your love. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. God of mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death. And by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue now with these words of prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In our pilgrimage, it's fitting now that we come outside into creation, remembering our connection to the earth, that it is from this sacred ground that we come and we return to the earth, all because of God's creative power to make things new. On this beautiful day, when we remember the way that the whole creation is being renewed here in the Northern Hemisphere, we remember that death is not the end, that our life continues on for us. And that gives us power now to come here and to commend our sister Dorothy to the earth, uh, as the family has done, and into God's care as a way of remembering that we can do this in trust and in hope and in remembering the way that this creation blesses us throughout life. In her journal of things that she is most thankful for, Dorothy mentioned beautiful creation, blue skies, green grass, flowers, mountains, stars. And it is into the God of all of this creation now that we commend her. Praying into your hands, God, we commend now your servant, Dorothy. You have received her as your own child. You have welcomed her as a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock. So we commend her into this love and grace of God now, which is your eternal gift to her. We commend her into the company of saints in light and into the rest of everlasting peace. 
in the name of God, our Creator, Christ, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing now a song which is a beautiful expression of that trust which Dorothy held within her, that God is our Redeemer and that God makes all things new. And I invite you now to sing it together with me. Receive now this benediction. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with favor and give you peace. Again, in the name of God who created us, Christ who redeems us, and the Spirit who gives us courage and faith now to continue our journey together with God in Christ. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, 
It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy I'm sorry that I left you I know you feel alone But God told me that he needed me He called me to come home In what seemed to be an instant 
in the twinkling of an eye. An angel gently took my hand and led me toward the sky. As I ascended into heaven beyond the pearly gates, angels were rejoicing. Then I saw his radiant face. God's eye shone down upon me from the glory of his throne. He said, Enter into paradise. As heavens now our home, I fought the fight. I finished the race. Throughout the trial, I kept my faith. No longer do I suffer. My body's been made whole. I'm flying. And heaven's now my home. God told me not to worry. He said you'd be okay because eternity is forever, and we'll meet again someday. I fought the fight. Now my home. I'm flying with the angels, and heaven's now my home.